Welcome, everyone, to another Skype session here on NCAA.com and March Madness. I'm Andy Katz. Please be joined by former Tennessee volunteer, two-time SEC Player of the Year, Grant Williams. And, Grant, we're doing our Team of the Decade right now. Tennessee just advanced to the Elite Eight in our fan voting as the Volunteers knocked off Ohio State in the Sweet 16. We'll now take on Michigan State in the Elite Eight in our Team of the Decade. On this team, you... Uh, we've got Scotty Hobson, Tobias Harris, Admiral Schofield, General Stokes. Uh, it's a pretty good squad. What's For your sure. reaction first to Tennessee taking out Ohio State prior to that, knocking off number one Villanova and Kansas State? Hey, I feel pretty good about it. The fact that we beat Villanova is really nice and then Kansas State. But that's a good team. Surprise, Jay Rich is on there. So that, that's that's a nice team without Josh Richardson. But uh, – I think we're gonna have a good matchup. I don't know who Michigan State is. It's probably Denzel, Draymond uh, Green, Draymond, Draymond. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Maybe Cassius, Miles Bridges, maybe. Now, That's in a fictitious too. matchup here, who would you guard uh, if if the option was someone like Valentine or someone like Draymond Green? I want to guard Draymond for sure because in college he had the ball. So I want to I want to match up against him and compete. Uh, that's a That'd be a fun game, especially with him talking. I probably just smiled the entire time, but with him talking trash, it'd be even funnier. So uh, I think it would be a good matchup for sure. I don't, I don't know who it, it would be a, t- a grinded out matchup for sure. We it'd be a, it's going to be come down neck to neck at the very end. I feel like it's going to be the same way fan voting wise too. So listen, uh, a couple things. First of all, we did sort of debate on who was going to be on these teams, and not having Josh Richardson is a fair criticism. Uh, but of the <laughs> other four players. On this squad, if we could actually put that five together in their prime at Tennessee, what would that five play like uh, with you obviously being on that squad? Man, that five would be uh, athletic, switching, physical team. Because we were already physical at Tennessee. But if you add Jarnell and you add Tobias, well, Tobias was skinny back then. But if you – and Scotty as an athlete, oh, my goodness. It would be, it'd be a massive, for one, physical game. And two, it would be just a very fun game to watch, I'd say, because you have Admiral knocking down threes. You have our entire team blocking shots, going for lobs. Oh, that would be a fun team to play with for sure. Now We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have a point guard. We'd have a lot of guys who yes. knock on the basket, though. <laughs> uh, now, listen, Brent. Uh, this also speaks highly in this sort of fictitious world uh, where it's fan voting to the volunteer nation. Uh, right. The fact that uh, they've come out in droves and made sure the Tennessee advances past Can- Kansas State, past Villanova, and now past Ohio State. You experienced it there for three seasons. What does this tell you? The fans are still amazing as they've, they've always been. Um, they've, they've been supportive of us even when we were down. So I have full and no doubt that they would continue to do that. And they're going to be even crazier this year with the young guys there in Tennessee. So, uh tremendous respect for them from Vol Nation and I still have love for them because of how not only just care about the team that's there but past teams as well so I'm just very happy that it, I can see that Tennessee is still going strong but I will I'm not gonna lie to you I've been keeping up with the team of the decade I'm not gonna lie Vol Nation is gonna hate me but BBN is gonna win this one I'm sorry you can't you can't have the the DeMarcus Carl Anthony Towns Anthony Davis no that's I'm sorry, I'm voting against us on that one. But everyone else, we got to win. <laughs> All right, Grant. Uh, quick snapshot. You mentioned it. Um, from what you know, I know you haven't been there. What's your quick snapshot of the Vols for this upcoming season? I think they're going to have definitely games, like breakout games for sure. Uh, they're a young team, so of course they're going through, the, through their bumps like every other young team will. But Coach Barnes is going to lead them well. Uh, Lamonte and Bowden are going to step up as two of the best guards in the nation. And I feel like they're going to do a great job of not only competing at a high level, but it's going to be a whole new look of a team. They're going to play differently. They may not necessarily have the bang post that they have with me and Admiral, but they have a lot of skilled guys. So they may have more threes shot. I think this, the team itself is going to change the identity of the team this year, but so, they're still going to have that toughness factor. I love Grant that you threw out this tweet recently when you got to Boston that, you know, you love going to other sporting events in Tennessee. And so you threw out, Hey, you know, whether it was BC, BU, Northeastern, Harvard, you name it, you know, I'm here, I want to see. So you, if I'm not mistaken, you already checked out at, what, a B- BC women's soccer game? Yeah, I just went there last night. They ended up beating UMass. So I'm actually 
there's supposedly rivalries within Boston. So, like, BC, UMass is a rivalry. You have to choose a side. And I don't necessarily know if I choose one, but we play at Tennessee. We play UMass. So, technically, I might need a side with the Eagles. So, uh, it's, it's going to be a competitive year for not only just sports up here professionally, but college-wise. Because I think about Harvard, how talented they are in the Ivy League this coming year. They have a chance to win the league and make the tournament and really shock some people. So, respect for Coach Amaker. And then you have teams like Northeastern who have been good. And I realized Boston was this crazy of a sports city, not only just professionally, but collegially as well. Yeah, it's a great sports town. And uh, in the spring, uh, I would think you guys will be in the playoffs. But uh, yeah. if you had free time, uh, BC Women's Lacrosse has played three straight national championship games. So they are clearly one of the best programs in the country. They've just fallen short three straight times, but gotten to the, oh, the national dear. championship. Short. They're going to get one this year. Yeah. So just throwing that out. All right, real quick before I let you go, what would you learn about yourself from summer league? Uh, I learned just how the game's played for myself and what I'm going to be asked to do. Um, nothing's going to change about my role. I feel like from summer league, I did everything that I needed for to play on this team. And that's going to be just screening, knocking down open shots from threes and, uh, make sure to be a physical defensive presence. So um, just to continue being more consistent at that and keep working at that. And then um, mentally learning how to guard guys at the NBA level because there's more space on the floor and there's a lot more talented uh, players at this level because you think about the worst team player on the team considerably, they're, they may have been college player of the year. <laughs> like Mo Wagner last year was the 15th player in the Lakers and he was – crazy for Michigan the year before that. So um, just respecting everyone. Hey, two guys that you hung out a lot with this summer, uh, obviously had great college careers, Carson Edwards and Taco Fall. Uh, yeah. Carson, what would you think of the way he played? And you, by the way, you guys were also at Fenway Park recently throwing out the first pitch. Yeah, Carson's a oh man. I've learned more about him the past two months, three months, than I feel like anybody other than Taco because he's just a corny dude. He's goofy. And he's just fun to be around. So, and he has a little quirkiness to him. So, uh, he, I learned that how aggressive he is. He never falters, and that's where we gain respect from. He, he reminds me of Lamonte in a sense of like Phil Burr had that relationship of like more so com, like standoffish, but we, that's how we communicate on the court at least. Because off the court, we'll be goofy and and one of the closest friends. So. Uh, I feel like just seeing him play, how the tough shots he makes, like seeing them on his team versus playing against them, it's a lot. You see more. You have a lot more respect for him. And then Big Talk, that's my guy. We have uh, a lot of things in common. We love the same same things. We're gonna do a lot of traveling this coming summer. So uh, just this team in general is just gonna have a lot of great chemistry and camaraderie. And even though Boston Celtics are trolling me every day now because they added Tremont Waters, LSU that beat us for the championship this year. Carson Edwards beat us Purdue in the tournament. Yante Mayton, I think, maybe. Bryce Brown, maybe. Like, I've seen all these dudes in the past week, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, like, good to know that they just keep trolling Tennessee and us right now. Well, Grant, best of luck to you as we get closer to training camp, and uh, we'll see how the balls do here down in the final Elite Eight. Hey, hopefully we can keep going.